All right, hello and welcome on the YouTube channel of Games CH, and again with another interview for FIFA 20 this time. And um, I give it up to you. Um, could you please introduce yourself and what's your job on uh, yep. FIFA 20? So I'm Matt Pryor, creative director on FIFA 20. Awesome. And you're especially involved in Volta football. Yes. It's one of the great new stuff in the game, yep. great new things in the game. Um, and today we heard that um, Volta football will also have a story mode. Yep. So it's about six hours, something like yep. this. And um, if, he, if people liked the journey mode from previous games, how would you compare those two? Yeah, so it is, it's a smaller version of, of the journey because the journey came in around about 15 hours. Uh, and the reason we wanted to do it in Volta was a number of reasons. Is one, the success of the journey. A lot of people now um, I really like that mode and now there's an expectation in FIFA that we deliver on a narrative kind of storytelling and uh, as I say the, the journey was hugely popular in that so it's obviously to kind of kind of satisfy those users that are now expect kind of a, a FIFA uh, narrative element but the bigger side of it to it is that it really kind of represented an opportunity for us to teach uh, the world of Volta, the world of street football via a narrative because even if you're a FIFA hardcore player you maybe played for 10 years maybe you don't understand the street scene what makes these players tick what's the difference between you know the pro game versus the street game what's Pana versus futsal so we're utilizing it as a means to not only deliver the narrative content that people maybe come to expect but also to teach people how to uh, mm -hmm. play the game so within that narrative you'll learn all the new mechanics or the simplified skill moves the tricks and all the rest of it so you kind of have it learn how to play street and the and volta but we also teach you about the culture and we also via the the narrative teach about core mechanics things like vanity chemistry player recruit because you steal players from other teams so it's a means to kind of take people through the the world of uh, of, of street and the world of volta and and onboard them into that into that world so uh, volta football is actually like a quite big game as, as you mentioned yes, i mean there's a lot of customization in yes. there there's a story in there there's yeah. an online mode of course yes. in there um, why did you feel the necessity to include it in FIFA 20 instead of bring it out as its own game? Well, I mean, FIFA's got so big, I think it, it, it warrants it's kind of as, uh, give people as much uh, content as possible. It is one of the features, we come to a lot of these events and it's one of the uh, a feature that the core are often asking yeah. for. And obviously we like to give people what we want uh, as often as we can. <laughs> it's obviously challenging with time and resources and all the rest of it. But um, it's one of those rare features that both the core is appealing to the core but then in many ways is great for the casual because just the inherent nature of the small sided, it kind of breaks down the barriers to entry. So you might not even be a football fan. You might not, I'm a Man City fan, but maybe someone doesn't follow football. They've not got no real team. They don't understand the offside rule and all the, all the complexities of the game. You don't really need to understand any of that to get into the, into the world of Volta because it's inherently a lot simpler to understand. There is no offside, there's very little rules. There's some in futsal, but not, not much elsewhere. So we, we see it as a real opportunity to kind of um, uh, appeal to the core, who are obviously our most important uh, players, but at the same time attract new users. So that's why we, we felt it was the right time to kind of roll it into the main title. Because if you release it as a separate title, you know, it might not get as much visibility uh, elsewhere. So this is an opportunity to kind of give it to everyone. After playing uh, the Volta mode for like four or five matches, yep. um, I felt like it had a... Uh, it, it felt like, like a FIFA game, but still offered the... Uh, yeah, the, the arcade style of a FIFA street yeah. there. How tough was it to, to find the right balance there? Yeah, I mean, it's great that you say that because that was kind of trying to find that balance. So if you, if you remember the previous FIFA street games, they were very much a separate um, experience to the regular game. It was its own gameplay engine. It's a very different experience. So the reason we want to kind of combine the two is, is there's a couple of reasons. One, authenticity. So when we set out on this journey to bring Volta to FIFA, one of the first things we did was go out on the road and speak to real world street players because authenticity is key for the FIFA franchise. So we went and wanted to make sure when we set off on this we were delivering an authentic street experience. And talking to the go those guys, and some of those guys were ex-pros who transitioned to the street side, it was good, reassuring to hear that whilst the street game is very different, obviously, um, and there is an element of flair and skill that's accentuated from the 11 v 11 game. Ultimately, at its core, it's still football. It's still about winning, it's about passing, shooting, all the rest of it. So, while there is an element of skills, ultimately, it's still fundamentally football. So, if you've got a guy who just does skills, it's all about him, he'll get booed off, you know. Mm. He, he still needs to be about you and the team. So, 
that's why from a gameplay sense it made sense to kind of ground it in our regular 11 v 11 gameplay engine so from an authenticity standpoint and then the second part of that is if you went to again using the old street game as reference if you got proficient at street and then went to fifa you had to relearn it because it was a mm. very different gameplay experience so two sides to that. So if someone comes to our game for the first time because they're attracted by Volta and the kind of uh, different nature of it, and then they play Volta and then they would have to replay or relearn things to transition to 11 v 11, that wouldn't be the best. So anything you learn in Volta, you can take to uh, the 11 v 11 game, with the exception of a few things like simplified skill moves. So is it, is it, we want to kind of utilize it as a means to kind of onboard to 11 v 11, if people want to do that. If they don't, there's more than enough content just to play Volta for the whole year. <laughs> but then the flip side of that is if you're a FIFA veteran, we didn't want people coming and like saying, what's this Volta? I don't understand it. So anyone that's a FIFA veteran and is proficient at FIFA can come and use all those skills that they've learned in 11 v 11 in, in Volta. So it was a combination of authenticity and kind of making sure that the kind of two worlds merged as they do in kind of real life. Mm. And uh, you also, also mentioned that only authenticity is important, yep. but also like a different style, especially when you're playing with your own character, yep. you'll be creating your own character. Yep. You can customize them, yes, or her, yes, or her. <laughs> very important, yes, or her. Um, and um, and and you can you can unlock and buy uh, new clothes yep. and stuff uh, for for your character. Can you can you tell us how this unlocking will work? Because I s I've seen that you will you will get coins. Yep. And of course, will there be micro trans transactions as well? So there won't be micro transactions. Okay. There will be an in-game currency called Volta Coins, which you earn just by virtue of playing the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you're playing, you're earning that. It's in, in part based on how well you play, but there is a set amount you get just for playing. Because again, we didn't want to kind of make it that much harder for people who aren't very good at the game. So there will be a set amount just for completing and finishing games, and then there'll be a bit more of how well you play. And then as you're in the Volta Clones, you can unlock the vanity content via mm -hmm. that. In addition to that, this is also a challenge system. So if, you, if there's a, a, a particular vanity item that you think, oh, okay, I really want that, there will be a, a, a gameplay element attached to it. So maybe it's like score five overhead kicks. Okay. So you can kind of change your gameplay um, a little bit to try and get after the vanity item. So there's kind of two ways to, to um, uh, acquire them. Mm. Uh, but that there, I mean, you, you bring up a very important part in, the, in terms of the Volta and how it differentiates. That is a, another key reason we wanted to bring it. We've obviously, for obvious reasons, focused on the 11 v 11 game, but that in is, is inherently limited in terms of the uh, creativity it allows to our users. You know, it's, it's pro kits in real world stadiums, uh, you know, foot offers a little bit of creativity, but not, not to the level of Volta. So Volta not only breaks down the barriers to new players, appeals to the core, but it also offers a completely different spin on what you've used to in, in, in FIFA. You can create your character, man, woman, on the same pitch at the same time, and then you can kit them out, and not only give your character a look, but your team a look. And the beauty of the whole thing is it's all user-generated uh, in the sense that the community of teams you face in Volta will be uh, uh, teams created by the community. So even in offline modes, we will pull users' teams down from the server. So every time you're going online, you're seeing someone's creativity in the bit wide world of FIFA. So it's really a, a shop window into people's creativity and, and something you've never ever seen before in FIFA. Yeah, and like you mentioned, um, the, your your own players will, will grow as well. They have a character yep. character system there. Yep. Um, first question was: Were there any uh, major changes? And second, um, you, you said you 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 will be you will be able to more or less steal other players yep. from other teams and stuff like that. What does that mean? Steal is probably the wrong word. Recruit is the <laughs> is right because steal in, indicates that that other person loses yeah. them and they don't. You just take a copy of that player at that time. So I could play you, whether it's actually PvP in Volta League or offline in Volta World. And if I beat you at the end of the game, I will get a, a, a display of all the players that were on the field at that time. And then I can take one of those, recruit one of those off onto your team. Now that play, any player you recruit is just a snapshot of you at that time. So if you were a 74 at that time, I will recruit you as a 74 okay. and then you will remain a 74. Your rest of your players don't grow. You yourself as an avatar do grow mm -hmm. via a, a whole a new player growth system with the trait skills that are tied to the, the, the street. So the different archetypes that you can build. You can reset your trait uh, uh, tree at any time so you can experiment with it. Um, but what that means is it's uh, ultimately people are going to be chasing the avatars because they're the ones that grow. So inherently your team will be made up of this maximum of 10 players on your squad. You're, you've got 10 other real-world people out there, and that's kind of an interesting, you know, you, 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 you're actually 
working with and taking other people's kind of creativity, which is kind of a nice touch. So it is a completely user-generated community. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Final letter.